Thierry, it's me. Oh, now, what brings you here, Miss Navia? I've heard that you made quite the name for yourself at the Opera House. Oh, <laughs> so you've caught news of that already. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm also a member of the Guards, you know. The way you make it sound, people would think I was sent off to Poisson because I had done something wrong. Are you sure there isn't a little bit of truth in that? Under normal circumstances, shouldn't you have been called back to the city already? <laughs> I mean, where I work is really up to me. Let's just say I enjoy the ambiance of Poisson. Callus did a fantastic job running the town. Building Spina di Rasula from the ground up and clearing many obstructions in my way. It would be next to impossible for me to find a similarly easy but high-paying job in the city. <sighs> anyway, enough chit-chat. Are these two friends of yours? You, uh, here for some formal business? Ah, uh, yes. These two are my partners. What happened at the Opera House made us realize that Linny's case and my father's may be related. We're trying to reinvestigate the details of my father's old case. Ah, I get it. You think there might be more to the case now that we know people can be dissolved into water, right? I was also flabbergasted when I first heard of it. If you want to go through the original files from your father's case, I can help you look for them. That'd be much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, actually, I have another question. Do you have the authority to dispatch Gardamex? Of course. Without them, I couldn't possibly handle Poisson on my own. Why do you ask? We definitely can't use them to forcefully get more evidence for your father's case. Well, you see, just recently, we were attacked by a horde of unnumbered Gardamex in the city. So, <laughs> if you hypothetically wanted to do something against me, all you would need to do was get rid of the Mecha serial numbers and... Send them after me. <laughs> then you think too highly of my abilities. Dispatching Mecha is very different from controlling them. If I had to make an analogy, when you order a dish, the chef will make it for you. You can ask the chef to cook, but not to massage your shoulders or carry your baggage. If you try to make unreasonable demands, the chef would just think you're out of your mind and ignore you completely. The same goes for me and my Gardamex. Removing a serial number is also not as easy as you might think. There are a lot of complex steps to it, and it's almost impossible to keep it a secret. So I can promise you, those mecha were definitely private units. They're certainly not cheap. So, whoever their owner is must be super rich, powerful, or both. Now that you mention it, though, being in the synth business would definitely be profitable enough to afford this. Oh, <laughs> then you're officially in the clear, Thierry. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you for the vote of confidence, Navia. Jokes aside, I'd like to wish you all the best with your investigation. I'll be staying in the city for a little while, so just come find me if you need any support from the guards. Hello. How may I help you? I'm here to see Marcel. Could you please let him know? 
You can just say Navia's looking for him. Sure. I will let him know right away. Ah, Navia, hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm not as young as I used to be, so my legs are giving out a bit. Oh, it's all right, Uncle Marcel. There's no need to stress. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about what happened in the Opera House. I'm sure you saw everything too, right? Yes, uh, I've never seen anything so strange. Oh, you were at the Opera House too? That's right. I went there with Navia to see the magic show. Who knew it would turn into a whole murder mystery? I also witnessed your marvelous sleuthing work. Quite impressive. To beat the Hydro Archon at her own game on her own turf, I can already imagine everyone in Fontaine discussing your exploits over a few glasses of wine. Oh, Paimon doesn't want to become the talk of drunkards! <laughs> Apologies. It's just how Fontaine is as a nation. Everyone loves drama and theatrics. Uncle Marcel, you've also noticed that other thing, right? The fact that humans can dissolve in water? Yes. I was reminded of your father's case right away. Is that what you're investigating now? Exactly. I, I still don't have much solid proof, but I can sense that the other side has already begun to act. Oh, and what makes you say that? We were attacked on Araneus by some unnumbered Gardamax. And there was also an attempt to get me to drink water from the Primordial Sea. If not for the vigilance of my partner, I probably wouldn't even be here talking to you right now. Oh, you're giving us too much credit. Wasn't it you who protected us? Alas, it seems things are heating up again. The peace that Callus sought so dearly will soon become a thing of the past. But rest assured, Navia, Poisson will always remain a safe haven for you. If you're scared, you can always return there. If anyone dares to lay their hands on you there, the Confrérie of Cabriere will use its funds to the last Mora to bring them to justice. Thank you, Uncle Marcel. But I don't intend to go into hiding. I'm going to strike while the iron's hot. Do you have any new thoughts on my father's case? Ah, about that. Sorry, my age is catching up with me, so it'll take me a while to recall my memory. The Confrérie was responsible for that banquet, so I was out and about the whole time making sure things were running smoothly. I didn't even have the time to drink with the guests. Then I heard the sound of a gunshot, and the rest was history. Oh, it's okay. No need to push yourself. We'll ask around some more, see if there are any valuable clues elsewhere. Sounds good. Just let me know if you ever need Mora. All my wealth comes from Callus's patronage and support. I'll spend however much it takes to clear his name. We've talked to all three suspects, purely based on their conversations with me. None of them sounded particularly suspicious. Mm, I, I suppose that's to be expected, though. If a single conversation's all that's needed to find them out, then my father wouldn't have needed to investigate the case for so many years. Anyway, even though we didn't make a breakthrough, let's still compile what we were able to find. But where should we start? Ah, you're right! Flora 
mentioned that Kalis probably only ended up with the gun because of circumstance. Hmm. That makes sense. According to Jacques' family members, he already told them that he had been discovered and that he had no choice before he left home that day. Hmm. If I had to guess, he probably received an order from the synth boss to kill my father. Had he refused, he and his family's lives would have been forfeit. So, Jacques fired the first shot? Oh? And why is that? Ooh, that's a good point. Jacques probably already knew that he was just being used as a tool for murder. And once he had completed his mission, he'd be of no more use to his boss. Huh. So, what would make more sense from his perspective would be to turn his back on the Order and seek protection from my father. Hmm, makes sense. But without evidence, that's still just a theory. Beside Jacques, the attack from the Gardamex has been bothering me quite a bit as well. It's obvious that our enemy has become more antsy after the secret of the primordial seawater was revealed. Do you think he knew, even then, that we'd follow this lead to the end? Given everything that's happened since, uh, it's quite possible. But who among the three suspects would have the ability to control privately owned Gardamex? Laurent? Uh, it is true that he was closest to my father, and thus had the best chance of learning about his dealings with Jacques. But, as Spina de Rosula's advisor, his work mostly deals with personnel and security, so he shouldn't have much means when it comes to finances. So you're saying he's too broke to afford a mecha army? Exactly. He can't. And even if he could, I don't think he would be able to dispatch a whole group so quickly. Uncle Marcel? Uh, hmm. My father did really trust him. And they worked together on a large number of projects. Maybe that's how he got to know Jacques. And with funds from the Confrérie, he could also afford a large number of Gardamex. Still really hard for me to imagine, though. After all, Uncle Marcel has been around since I was just a child. Also, wouldn't this mean he has been spending a whole lot of mora and energy to fight his own synth business? Thierry, you say? Huh. It is possible that he's figured out a way to convert the Gardamex for personal use. But I didn't feel like he was lying when he was talking to us about the Mecca. I also don't think he'd be able to keep that kind of tampering under wraps. Yeah, had he actually tampered with the Mecca, we'd be able to prove it with a simple check of the guard's inventory. If the Mecca were taken from the guards, it should be pretty easy to find out when and how that happened. <sighs> Who could it be? You know, if you think everything through, Uncle Marcel is indeed the most suspicious of them all. Could we be missing other suspects? Malus didn't know about the people turning into water thing when he narrowed it down to these three, did he? 
<sighs> Malus has always been very reliable, and his judgment of others' trustworthiness has been fair and well considered. When he laid out his case for the three, the rationale he gave me made a lot of sense as well. The suspect is knowledgeable about the Spina's internal affairs, has the means to dispatch Mecha to assassinate us, and possesses significant intellect and foresight. <sighs> Even if I don't want to believe it, I'm starting to see how things could all tie back to Uncle Marcel. Well, we still have another trump card on top of all the theorizing and speculating. Yes. Malus did say that charging straight in there would be extremely risky. But we don't have any other options right now. We need far more solid proof before we can hope to go charging in on our enemy. Navia, here you are. Oh, I've been looking for you. Huh? Aren't you the guy from the guards? Did something happen? Yeah. News came from Arrhenius just after you left. We've got another trial on our hands. Wasn't that place built specifically for holding trials? What's so newsworthy about this one? I know, I know. But they said the person they're putting on trial is a Fatui harbinger called Tartaglia. What? Is that someone you know? Yeah, we know him. Maybe even a little too well. Well... He's been accused of being the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. It's absurd, don't you think? Wait, how? None of our investigations have had anything to do with him. That's what I thought was strange about it, so I came to tell you the news right away. If the charge against him stands, then it'll be next to impossible to get the guards to support any of our planned investigations. Right. Because they'll think they've already found the culprit. Yeah. And it'll be a lot harder than to clear Mr. Callus's name. Hmm. I understand. <sighs> well, partner, what do you think we should do? We still haven't found any conclusive evidence. Uh... Um... Huh? Split up? What do you mean? <laughs> Just as expected of my partner. Since this is a trial about the serial disappearances case, the culprit's attention will be focused on Arrhenius, leaving his home base wide open. You're right. This is our best opportunity. <laughs> All right, then. Let's do this. I'll stall them at the Opera House and charge Marcel as the true culprit. I won't have any chance of making that charge stick, though, unless we find more evidence. It'll be up to you to make it back in time and hand the decisive evidence to me. We'll help you, just like you helped us in Linny's trial! Demoiselle, please allow us to accompany you. I'm ready. Ah, oh, <laughs> Malou, Silver! When did you two get here? We heard that you'll be leaving Poisson, and figured that you might require our assistance. It's our hope that your confidence will be bolstered with the two of us by your side. <laughs> Thank you so much. Then, let's make haste for Arrhenius. Paimon, Traveler, I'll see you at the Opera House. See you then! Pleasure to be working with you. Huh. According to Malus's info, the synth production base is underwater. Let's go and try to find the entrance.
it. Huh. So this is the entrance that leads to the synth production base. It sure doesn't seem out of the ordinary at all. Ah, you're right. An important place like this is bound to have a ton of protective measures and mechanisms. Navia's probably arguing up a storm right now to stall for us. It would appear that I must repeat my question again, Mr. Tartaglia. Do you accept the charge that you are the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case? To be perfectly honest, I don't understand your country's complicated court system, or the reason why I'm being charged with something I've never even heard of. However, I did hear that people who have been charged can choose to participate in a duel to clear their name. Is that right? In which case, as long as I accept the charge, I can have an all-out fight with that champion duelist Clorend, right? I've got to admit, that's one of the most enticing offers I've ever received. When I privately sparred with her last time, she was obviously holding back. Real disappointing. Hey! Don't you understand? You're currently the prime suspect for a major case. This isn't the place for you to be looking for fights. Oh? Sounds like the Hydro Archon wants to lecture me on the ways of the Opera House. Then why don't you duel me too? I'm the kind of student that learns best in the heat of battle. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Alas, it would appear that communication with the defendant is going poorly. And we have made very little progress. In that case, let me explain everything from the very beginning again. The goal of this trial is to determine the culprit behind the serial disappearances case. <laughs> that case had nothing to do with him! You've got the wrong man! Huh? What's going on? <sighs> Why is she interjecting again? <laughs> I told you it couldn't be one of the Fatui Harbingers. Miss Navia, this is the second time you've interrupted the court proceedings. I only tolerated your behavior last time because you were able to provide the court with a key eyewitness. But that was an exception rather than standard court protocol. I can very well charge you with contempt of court for your interjections. Oh, please. Did you ever think I had any respect for this place's pointless theatrics? We can put that discussion aside for now. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to charge the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. And if my charges prove true, then Tartaglia here will be proven innocent by default, correct? Oh. A young lady has charged in and offered to clear my name. How fascinating. Well, I'd gotten half bored to death by all these rules and procedures anyway. So I'll take you up on that offer. So, Your Honor, is there nothing else for me to do now? You may take a seat for now in the audience, but that doesn't mean the suspicions against you have been lifted. Now then, Miss Navia, who is the person you would like to charge instead? That person is... <laughs> Marcel, the head of Confrérie of Cabriere! Huh? What Confrérie? Never heard of them in my life. I've heard of them, but... Weren't they Spina di Rosula's sister organization? Oh, is this going to be a friends to enemies type situation? Please let me remind you, Miss Navia, that charging someone is an incredibly serious matter. Committing to the charge also means taking on the legal responsibilities associated with it. And if the charge fails, depending on the circumstances, you may also be charged with the crime of making a false accusation. Knowing this, do you still wish to charge this man? Yes, I do. In that case, I declare the charge to be valid. Miss Navia and attorneys, please take your places on the court. Members of the guards, please contact Mr. Marcel right away so that he may stand trial. Mr. Marcel, 
You will not require an attorney, is that correct? Ah, apologies, sir. It all just happened so quickly, I still haven't figured out what's going on. I think an attorney won't be necessary. This is probably just a misunderstanding between me and Navia. Very well. In that case, since both sides have now arrived, Miss Navia, please present your charges. I would like to take everyone back to three years ago, to the case of Callus the Unfaithful. Only through elucidating what really happened in that case can we connect all the dots for the serial disappearances case. Navia, do you really think that I was the one who killed your father? Come on, why would I do that? Callus was my benefactor, and remember both you and I only ran to the scene when we heard the sound of a gun. If that's enough to make me a suspect, wouldn't that make everyone at that banquet a suspect as well? I... Uh, I think there's no point in getting into the specifics right now. The audience doesn't even have the big picture yet. Even I'm... <laughs> struggling to remember some details of that case. Exactly correct, Your Honor. I must refresh everyone's memory about that case before I can explain my charge and reasoning. I see. In which case, I will recount the findings about that case as originally recorded by Maison Guardianage. On the day of the murder, Spina di Rosula hosted a large banquet in a countryside estate owned by the Conferie of Cabriere. During the banquet, all attending guests heard two gunshots from the courtyard. When the guests arrived at the scene, they found the primary suspect, Callus, holding a gun, while his acquaintance, Jacques, lay dead from a gunshot wound. The guard's investigation did not recover any other firearms from the scene. As a result, they concluded that the suspect's first shot must have missed, while the second must have taken Jacques's life. The suspect did not dispute this conclusion, and also declined to defend himself in court. Instead, he chose to prove his innocence through a duel. Callus was defeated by champion duelist Clarand in the ensuing duel, and soon succumbed to the injuries. These are the known facts about the case. The one with the motive to kill was Jacques, not my father. And even so, Jacques still had no reason to pull the trigger. Uh, in truth, the third person shot Jacques first, and was shot in turn by my father when my father seized the gun from him. After that, the true culprit turned the third person into water, erasing all traces of him from the scene. <clears throat> Thank you for the summary, Your Honor. Of course, the guard's conclusion appeared quite sensible to us at the time. However, we should revisit the case now that we've gained new information about the abilities of water from the Primordial Sea. Something's not right. Uh, let me think. This assassin first shot Jacques, then turned to shoot Callus, only for Callus to wrestle the gun from him and kill him instead.
something's not right. Uh, let me think for a little while longer. Huh. Something's not right. Uh, let me think for a little while longer. Something's not right. Uh, let me think for a little while longer. Huh. Some... Huh. Some... A pile of clothing was found at the scene. The guards once believed they were used by Jacques as a costume to disguise himself. But now, it is clear that the clothes were proof that there was a third person at the scene and that they were turned into water after committing the murder. Since it was raining that day, the culprit was confident that they could use the rain to wash away all traces of their dissolved accomplice. The testimony of the victim's family confirms that Jacques had thoughts of assassinating Callus when he set out for the banquet. However, in the end, he reconsidered and instead shared everything with Callus, hoping to seek the latter's protection. Unfortunately for Jacques, the true culprit had already considered this possibility and had sent out another assassin. Realizing this, the true culprit caused the hired assassin to dissolve into water, leading everyone to believe Callus was responsible for Jacques' murder. This is the true version of events. what happened wait you're telling me something as dangerous as water from the primordial sea has been used for all these years what a great theory it also explains Callus's and jacques respective motives i guess they didn't shoot each other after all mr marcel you are the one being charged with the crime you should provide a rebuttal if you wish to prove your innocence ah but i think i agree with everything navia just said in fact, there was nothing in her speech that directly implicated me. Then, may I ask some questions? In my opinion, we primarily need to determine two things. One, do you have the evidence to back up your claims? I'm afraid not. At least not at this very moment. Boo! <laughs> if you don't have any evidence, you should just go home! I may not have the evidence with me, but I know where I could go to collect it. If we look up the deserted clothes against a record of people who went missing around the same time, we should be able to find a match. Considering the serial disappearances case, the guards probably kept careful records of all missing persons from around that time, regardless of age or gender. That makes sense to me. Monsieur Nivellet, I would consider this to be a reasonable investigative direction. Huh. Why do I feel like Farina's acting a little differently today? Maybe she's scared of embarrassing herself again? Alternatively, she's become more diligent after charging an innocent citizen in the last trial. My second question has to do with the ensuing duel. If the truth is indeed as you described, then why didn't Mr. Callus explain himself in court? If he had testified that a person had been dissolved, he could have at least mounted a defense. I thought about this too, and the answer is actually pretty simple. He felt there were things that were more important to him. The dissolving power of water from the Primordial Sea is an important secret for the true culprit of the serial disappearances case. My father could have exposed it for all to see, but he chose to take it to the grave. At that time, Spina di Rosula was in dire straits, and his reputation had already been shattered. He had no guarantee that going forward with the truth would allow the culprit to be brought to justice. What was certain, however, 
was that it would paint a gigantic target on my back. Boss once told me that Demoiselle had already been selected as the next target of the serial disappearances case. What? If the secret had gotten out, the culprit would have fought an all-out war with Espina right there and then. I wouldn't have been the only one in danger. All of us would have stood to lose our lives. Of course, the guards might eventually figure out the truth of the matter and determine that we were in the right. But what good would that do? How can a hollow verdict protect anyone? Had this opera house ever given my father any kind of confidence in its brand of justice, Spina di Rosula would have had no reason to exist. But by staying silent, we retain the ability to deter our opponents and continue the stalemate. I was able to become Spina di Rosula's president, which made me harder to target, as well as giving me more time to grow and learn. And once I have figured out the truth and stepped up to the challenge, I will do what this opera house cannot and restore my father's truth and honor back to him. So, you mean to say, your father intended to die in the duelist's ring? That's right. Do you have any proof? Of course. All you need is to ask his opponent, Clorand. I don't need your apology, your guilt, or your support from the shadows. You don't have to do anything for my sake. But since he entrusted his will to you, Clorand, you should tell us the truth about his sacrifice. Um, so, during the duel, did you believe that Callus was intending to die? <sighs> yes, I did. As a champion duelist, I fought many battles and taken a countless number of dishonored lives. In my line of work, I've seen all kinds of people give their all for the faintest hope to continue living. Some were determined, others passionate, and some even manic and twisted. Just one look and I can tell if a duelist is hoping to live or if they're looking to die. I hereby swear on my name and honor as a champion duelist that Mr. Callus never intended to leave the ring alive. <sighs> Since that's your testimony, I have no more questions. It appears there really are good grounds to reopen this case. I concur. However, Miss Navia, you still have not explained the link between your father's case and the serial disappearances case. Right? What she said was fascinating, but kind of beside the point. Wait. Weren't they just talking about the Serial Disappearances case? Of course, Your Honor. The two cases are connected via a matter of timing. In my father's case, the culprit intended to kill both Jacques and Callus. As a result, they planned to act after hearing two gunshots. And at the end of Linny's trial, the culprit also only dissolved the victim in front of everyone because they realized they were at risk of being identified. The culprit could only time their actions so precisely if they were already at the scene. Coincidentally, Marcel attended both the banquet and the trial. So that's why you suspected me. <sighs> Even after hearing your reasoning, I still can't help but find it a little preposterous. I'm used to it, though. You've always been an impulsive and sentimental child, Navia. It's one of your most endearing traits. No need to appeal to pathos. I won't try to refute your points one by one, but even if everything you just said was true, can you prove that I was the only person present at both events? On top of that, does a person have to be physically present to control the timing? Can't someone remotely monitor the place? Uh... I don't know what she can say to that. I know that even with that, you might still think you can reduce the list of suspects with some further investigations, until I'm the only one left on the list. Alas, who won't feel at least a little hurt by an accusation of murder from a girl you see as your own daughter? But if I were to dismiss this completely, you'd also think I'm not being considerate of your feelings. Ah well, let Uncle Marcel teach you another lesson. Do you know what the biggest flaw in your reasoning is? I suppose you're gonna tell me anyways. 
It's timing again. I'm a businessman by trade. From that standpoint, there's no reason for me to kidnap young women. It's a high-risk action with nothing to gain. In addition, I left my home in Snezhnaya when I was young to come to Poisson and work in some trade. My business only thrived when I received Callus' patronage. But the disappearances began before I ever stepped foot in Fontaine. Uh. I do apologize, Demoiselle. This was my mistake. No, it's not your fault. I'm sure he had come prepared. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Would you like to check the date of my first business license against the first known case of the serial disappearances? You can also take a look at my border entry records, or ask my friends and family when I left Snezhnaya for the first time. Could those records and testimonies do something to appease the unspeakable anguish in your heart? Oh, seems like she got the wrong guy. At this rate, Nagi will be convicted for falsely accusing him. I think you've done a superb job of dissecting your father's feelings as he neared the end of his life. But aren't you going against all of his wishes and expectations right now? He wished for you to become more rational, collected, and conscientious, instead of dwelling only on your own feelings. Once you've learned to be more considerate of others' feelings, and to stop rushing headlong into things, you'd have met most of his expectations. This isn't just about me, and it never has been. The biggest difference between me and the rest of the victims is that I still have the ability to search for the truth. While that same agency has long been taken from then, the people whose families were destroyed by synth abuse, the people who lost their loved ones to the serial disappearances, and the people who suffered tragic ends due to their sense of justice. Many people's images are flashing before my eyes. I'm sure some are coming to those of you in the audience as well. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? <laughs> oh, so you do know that name. <laughs> I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. Up, but Paimon doesn't see a way. Let's take a look around. Maybe we'll find a hidden mechanism that'll show us the way up.
The water level is rising. Now we can swim to the top. But this is still a ways away from where we need to go. Right now. Settle down. Let the mighty be humble. Right here. Right now. Silence! Oh. Justice is blindsided. My apologies. Mind isn't here. Ah, that's right. Then let's hurry up and find some evidence so we can get back to the Opera House and help Navia. Let's see what 
what's written here. Nothing escapes Detective Paimon's eyes. Hmm. Callus. Navia's father. Oh, this seems to be an investigation report on him. Hmm. Callus has passed on to certain members of his organization. The old dog's a real menace to deal with. Even if he abides by the promise he's made to us, he will still have the upper hand. He can act whenever he wants to make our lives miserable. The only option left is to remove him from the picture entirely. I concur. Let's send someone to kill him. He won't declare war as long as we don't touch Navia. Oh, seems like we've got a bunch of correspondence between the higher-ups. <laughs> They're all just so evil. What's this over here? Looks like some kind of place for research. Experiment number 16 aims to verify Jacob Ingold's research conclusions on the Primordial Sea and use his theory as a foundation to achieve a breakthrough. The experiment was a failure. No individual managed to resurface from the water from the Primordial Sea. Female specimens 22, 23, and 24 were dissolved! <laughs> Sorry, Traveler. Paimon will try her best. It's just... that... Paimon's never read something so scary before! How could someone write something that terrible in such a matter-of-fact tone? You read the rest. Paimon's too scared to keep going. So that's why he did all of these experiments. Wait, did he really think he'd be able to find a way just by dissolving people over and over? That's just insane! Huh? Isn't that the name you heard by the fountain? Paimon thought he was an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. Ah. <sighs> You mean Vache is the one who did all of these... Uh, experiments? So that's it! Vache was no victim, but personally took his lover and... No, that's not it either! If that's the case, why would he want people to resurface from the water? In any case... Paimon will write it all down. Just can 
contain the waters of the primordial sea. Hmm. Mixing in progress. Ready to drink. Stack sample? Huh. They've also got all the synths pretty clearly labeled. Whoa! There's even fruit flavored synth? Yep. It's super obvious. where they make all the synth! And that special water is the main ingredient! If you dilute it with normal water, you'll get synth! But the pure stuff can dissolve a human! Paima will take notes on this incriminating evidence! Almost everything here, and it seems like our theories were spot on. But. Yeah, we haven't found anything that reveals his true identity. No wonder even Nervalette wasn't able to find anything. Whoever it is probably destroyed everything to do with that name a long time ago. That way, even if we bring all this back to the opera, we won't be able to identify the true culprit. Sure thing. Paimon won't admit defeat to this guy either. We'll find something for sure! Your diary! Let's see! Aww. It's just a normal diary chronicling their love story. She was so sweet, too. Oh, Paimon feels even worse for her now.
So many! A whole page is worth! But they're all crossed out. Was she unhappy with all of them? The final name she decided on was... Marcel. Wait, but... Marcel's pretty old. <gasps> Has this case been going on for so long that he's Pache and Veneer's grown son? Uh, hey! Paimon still hasn't figured it out yet. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? Huh. <sighs> Oh, so you do know that name. I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. Navia, we're back! Uh, as expected of my partner, I just knew you'd return in the nick of time. Just how often do you intend to flout the rules of this court? It's all right, Monsieur Nervalet. Given their confidence, I expect they've found the crucial evidence. But the truth of it, Marcel, is that you've always been Vache. Huh? We've investigated your lair and we already know everything! After your lover, Veneer, was dissolved, you kept abducting young women to experiment on the hopes of bringing her back to you! You even created Marcel as a new identity and destroyed all records of your past as Vache! So that's it. Even the villains in opera performances rarely go that far. And with that, Marcel's motive has now been established. This information regarding your past also dismantles your prior timing defense. Well, Marcel, do you know where you went wrong? <sighs> you fixated your gaze on the lover that passed away, instead of paying attention to the living people around you. So, you never noticed how we changed, or how we grew as individuals. You also never understood Boss's real expectations for his daughter. Or our determination to see things through. Your determination? <laughs> Mr. Marcel, please speak up now if you would like to defend yourself. Otherwise, the trial will move on to the next stage. Do you think... Do you really think I wanted to do any of this? Pay attention to you? <laughs> what for? Have you ever paid attention to me? Ever empathized with my pain? Ever known how it feels to watch the love of your life dissolve right in front of your eyes? No one helped me. No one even believed me. All those decades ago, even the officers from the Maison Guardianage were laughing at me. They said there's no way a human being can turn into water. So I must have gone mad from grief. Vinyar's death was brushed away by all of you as if it didn't matter at all. Well, now you know, don't you? Ha! Well, it's too late now. All those who were dissolved are gone forever. You only have yourselves to blame. You set up this ornate opera house in pursuit of your so-called justice. Your beloved drama, while turning a blind eye to the suffering of the people. Vignier is dead. We promised each other that we would always be together. Wherever she goes, I will follow. But I'm not from this blasted place, so I can't be dissolved, no matter what I do. I can't dissolve! Can't dissolve! Can't dissolve! <laughs> 
do you all see? I can't go, I can't follow. So if I can't go where she is, what choice do I have but to try to bring her back? I did all of that, and in the end, that accursed callus still got the better of me. I spent my entire life living on pins and needles, only to get stabbed by his idiot daughter at the very end. <laughs> the suspect is exhibiting signs of mental distress. Guards, please restrain him. Don't touch me! Don't anybody come near me! I still need to save Vinye. Her promise. We made a promise. Vinye. Vinye. Please, Vinye. Don't think badly of me. All I want to do is fulfill our promise. At this point, the verdict of this trial is clear. With Mr. Marcel's conviction, the charges against Mr. Tartaglia no longer have any basis. Fine by me. I was in a bad mood, but after a show like that, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Traveler, please submit all the evidence you have collected to the guards, so that I might review and summarize the truth behind the serial disappearances case. The man now known as Marcel was originally named Varche, and worked as an adventurer with his partner and lover, Vignier. During an underwater expedition, Vignier accidentally came into contact with water from the primordial sea, and was dissolved in front of Vache as a result. Vache learned of the primordial water's existence through the work of others, and began to kidnap young women for research, with the goal of discovering a method to restore Vignier back to life. To cover his tracks, he invented the new alias of Marcel, and began to operate a business in Poisson. During the course of his research, Vache discovered that a diluted concoction of water from the primordial sea can induce feelings of euphoria, and began to manufacture and market synth. However, as he accumulated wealth to fund his continued research and expanded the scope, he came into conflict with Spina di Rasula. After exchanging blows with Spina di Rasula for many years, Varche decided to assassinate their president, Callus, at a banquet. Although the assassination did not go as Varche expected, he was able to turn Callus into the murder suspect by dissolving the assassin he sent to the scene. And just recently, Varche attempted to frame Linny as the culprit of the serial disappearances case using a similar method. However, his attempt to frame Linny failed and the power of water from the primordial sea became public knowledge. This case also exposed enough of Varche's machinations that he was eventually successfully charged in court. Thus concludes the enigmatic history of the serial disappearances case, with the truth revealed to all. The Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Varche. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Varche is guilty. Guards! Take Varche away. Good. It's what he deserves. Uh, with that, the serial disappearances case is over now. We really just witnessed history. Who would have thought the true culprit would be such a polite and well-spoken guy? Yippee! We helped Navia bring the bad guy to justice! He's hurt so many innocent people and now he's finally getting what he deserves! Huh? Are you okay? <sighs> Demoiselle, you are absolutely brilliant. The day our late boss had always hoped for has finally come. You can rest easy now, knowing justice has been served. Yeah. Yeah. It's finally over. It's all thanks to you guys. And my partner. See, Papa? Spina di Rosula's still doing well with me at the helm. 
Well now, hasn't this been a most delicious piece of drama? The villain has been caught, justice has been served, past wrongs have been righted, and it's a big ol' happy ending. Since it's been such a great show, I'll just let the false accusations against me slide. Either way, I've still got some business to attend to, so if you'll excuse me... Please wait just one moment, Mr. Tartaglia. Ugh, what now? None of this has anything to do with me. According to court protocol, since this trial was initiated due to a charge against you, a verdict must also be made regarding the initial charge before the trial can conclude. Oh, come on. Is this really necessary? Haven't you already caught the real criminal? Isn't it time for side characters like me to exit stage left? Please respect the laws of Fontaine. This has always been the rule. All right, all right, but this sure is a lot of hassle. All I need to do is stand over there, right? Let's just get this over with. Through evidence presented in the public trial that was just held, it has been established that Mr. Tartaglia has no direct connection to the serial disappearances case. The guilty party has been identified, and thus it is logical to suppose Mr. Tartaglia is innocent of the charges. We now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinale to render the final verdict on the charges. Hmm. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinale, Mr. Tartaglia is guilty. What? Hey, hey! That's not funny! Didn't you just say I'm supposed to be innocent? What's with this verdict? Is your justice machine malfunctioning? Huh? This has never happened before. The Oratrice actually returned a different verdict from the Chief Justice. I mean... Have you ever heard of an innocent Fatui Harbinger? Do you think the Oratrice might have just convicted him on general principle? But weren't the charges about the serial disappearances case? No matter what else he's guilty of, it shouldn't affect the verdict in this case, right? The judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal is, by law, the final verdict of the court. We must accept the guilty verdict. Guards, please take the suspect into custody per court protocol. So this is how justice is done in Fontaine. What a joke. Hmm. You've got your rules. Well, I've got mine too! I am sorry. If you have been wronged, we will find the truth. But the rules of the court must be upheld. Apologies. This is also the first time I've encountered such a situation. However, according to the rules established at the conception of Fontaine's court system, the Oratrice's judgment is the final verdict of the court. All I do is follow court procedure. As for why the Oratrice arrived at the conclusion it did, you should probably ask someone more knowledgeable than me. Uh, why are you looking at me? I had nothing to do with it! I don't know what happened there either. Hey, stop staring at me! What does Lady Farina mean by that?
She says she has no idea either? But that's impossible. Didn't she create the Oratrice herself? Yeah, so are the verdicts reliable or not? Can results like this really be called justice? <laughs> My dearest citizens, did you really think we'd allow an incorrect verdict to be handed out in this court? Did you really believe that the judgment could be mistaken or be the result of some sort of random mishap? Don't tell me. You thought even I had been blindsided by the Oratrice's result. But the way she looked just now, it was pretty obvious she had no idea what was going on. However, given the state of things, I shall give you an explanation. Everything that just took place, including my supposed shock and bafflement, was a part of an elaborate performance, with every action meant to stir up drama and excitement. And, <laughs> of course, for every performance there is a script, Everything has unfolded exactly as I expected from the very beginning. As the embodiment of the very concept of justice, the Oratrice shall never render an arbitrary judgment! If you thought Child had nothing to do with the serial disappearances case, it is only because you've been blinded by the superficial appearance of innocence. Everything he's done, not to mention the danger he poses, are beyond ordinary comprehension and completely unforgivable! All shall be revealed in time. You will come to understand my noble intentions, as well as the absolute correctness of the Oratrice's verdict. <laughs> Now, having said that, although I hate to leave things hanging in suspense, it is now time for this performance to end. As the lead actress, I shall be the first to take my leave. Toodaloo! So she chose to make her escape after all, did she? Uh, so you're saying we shouldn't put much stock into what she just said? Hmm. <laughs> She probably just put on that performance to save face. As for the truth, it's unlikely that she actually has any idea. However, please be assured that I will continue to investigate this case in a personal capacity. Just as I promised, if the judgment has been incorrect, we will do our utmost to clear his name. All right. Even though we feel pretty badly for him, we'll take your word for it for now. After all, he's done plenty of bad stuff. So he should have known he'd go to prison someday, right? What are you doing? Quick, stop him! Traveler! Hey! Traveler! Ah, Marcel! What are you doing over here? Stop resisting arrest! Cease, or we'll add another charge to the list! No, 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 wait! I, I just want to ask the Traveler something. I I'm not looking to run away. Please, please, just let me ask this one small thing. Go on. Thank you. Thank you. I was being led away when I finally realized something. Where did you first hear the name Vache? I erased all records of that name. So, unless... Are you still trying to prove your innocence? Give it up. You've already been convicted. Uh, really? Y y you did? You're sure? You met her, but how could that be? How did you manage to do it? The Fountain of Lucene? Then, 
Then she's been so close to me all along, and I just never... Please, please give me a chance to talk to her again. Just let the Traveler take me to the fountain to see her one last time. This is the last request I'll ever make in my life. You can do whatever you want to me afterwards. I don't care. What? Give an inch and you want to take a mile? Do you think serial killers get to make requests like that? Hmm. Paimon agrees. Why should we give him what he wants when he's only done a ton of super terrible things? This request, is it worth as much to you as your life? Of course! Wait, no. It's worth even more than my life. Humans. Will they betray the instinct to live just to satisfy spiritual needs? Very well. I will grant your request. Your Honor, I fear that... I will go with him. You do not need to worry about any escape. <sighs> in that case, I shall leave him in your most capable hands, Chief Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Place? You said she's here, but what do I need to do to see her? Yeah, and even Paimon could hear her after drinking that thing. Didn't you just drink a lot of it on the stage as well? Oh, in that case... Vashe! Ah! Yes, that's it! So you heard it too! Vinier, it's me! It's me, Vache! Vache? Vache? I'm here! I'm here! Where are you, Vinier? I'm coming for you! I'm finally here for you! Hey, wait! Be careful! Hey, wait! Vinier, is that you? It's me, Vache! Vinier! Vache, why did you come? Didn't I say? You don't need to look for me. You... You look a lot older than I remember. How long has it been? It's been more than 20 years. I've suffered for over 20 years since the day you left. All this time... Only the thought of bringing you back has kept me alive. Nothing else mattered to me. Oh, I must be dreaming. Who would have thought I'd get the chance to tell you all of my feelings like this? Vinier, you are my everything. I really don't know how I could live without you. But Vache, if you ask me... This world would be better off without you. Uh, wh what are you saying? If not for you, I would have finished my law degree and probably become a top-tier attorney one day. If not for you, I would have continued to pursue my love of the arts, and my works would have been displayed in the Palais Mermonia itself. If not for you, I would at least have been able to take care of my mother. And she would not have grown old and died alone, with nothing but the tears on her cheeks. It's all because of your selfishness, Vache. It's all because of you. You... Wait, you are not Vinier. Who are you? You're right. I am not Vignier. I am... the Sacrifices. Every woman who died by your hand, as our bodies dissolved, our consciousnesses flowed back to the Primordial Sea. 
Our thoughts circulated endlessly within the Primordial Sea, and we were no longer individuals. But we became one, just as streams of water come together in the sea. I'm Cressy. I'm Lemony. I'm Azeen. The only one I am not is Vignere. Why? But then, where is Vignere? She doesn't want to see you anymore. Every tendril of her consciousness is avoiding you. This is what you get for your selfishness. Your selfishness robbed us of our lives and our futures. You said time and time again that you'd do any and everything for her. But did you ever consider whether she'd want to see you do the things that you did? If she would despise you for what you became? I... um... I... You are a liar, a heartless murderer, and a cowardly narcissist. The only thing you are not is Vignere's beloved. From the moment your first victim died and her consciousness merged with Vignere's, she has had nothing but pure hatred for you. No! Vignere! She can't hate me. Let me see her. Please, have mercy. You still don't understand. When I said don't look for me, that came from the real Vignere. She really doesn't want to see you anymore. But on top of that, she also said that because it's her final drop of pity for you. She said that because she knew that if you did come here, we will show no mercy to you. Vashe. Vashe? Vashe? Vashe. 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 Drown. Shopping! Gosh, it's really been a long time since we've been able to relax. Huh. Well met, partner. I knew something great was going to happen when I woke up in such a good mood today. Even this weather can't put a damper on the demoiselle's mood. It's a pleasure to see you both again. Oh, now that I believe. I'm easy to work with and always bring home the bacon. Who wouldn't treasure having a partner like me? <laughs> Sounds like you're really enjoying life these days, Navia. What have you been busy with since the trial? <sighs> it's just been one thing after the other. I've been making non-stop trips between Poisson and the courts in Sen. Everyone from Spina di Rosula organized a memorial for my father. We never held a memorial when he first died, since everyone knew that even if we held one back then, no one was going to come. This time, though, everyone in Poisson, and even many people from the court, all attended. Ah, so his name's definitely been cleared now. That's what we like to hear. It's been the dearest wish of Demoiselle all along. <laughs> that blasted, stubborn fool. I was right to put my faith in him. I'm so glad I didn't give up on the case all those years ago. Oh, by the way, I ran into Charlotte just after I left the memorial service. Uh, well, 
Maybe it'd be more accurate to say I knew she would be there. And there was no way she'd just let me go. Huh? So you know Charlotte too? The Charlotte? Journalist from the Steambird? Yeah. Way back when I first became the president of the Spina di Rosula, she was all over me. Wouldn't take no for an answer. I believe the story was called The True Heart of Darkness, Secret Tales of the Yellow Rose. To be fair, though, it was a really flattering feature. <laughs> so, we've been on pretty good terms ever since. She was trying to lean on our friendship to get me to do an exclusive piece on the serial disappearances case. Oh, yeah. She told us about that. She's always been super interested in that case, so now her wish has finally come true, too! Anyway, I told her to make sure that when she writes about you guys entering the Opera House with the critical evidence, that you both sound really cool. <laughs> now that's another thing to look forward to! We trust Charlotte's skills with a pen for sure! Oh, and in other news, I also took Clarand out for a meal. Oh, are you two on better terms now? Mm. While you were investigating Vache's headquarters, Clorand gave testimony on my father's behalf. It was thanks to her that we were able to turn the tide. I wanted to thank her. I mean, <laughs> there's also no point in being awkward all the time. So we took the chance to reconcile with each other. Oh, that's great! Paimon also thought Clorand wasn't actually a bad person. It's always good to have more friends. Anyway... Now that the case has finally been solved, perhaps it will slowly begin to fade from the public consciousness. Oh, actually, there's still one last thing I need to do. What is it? I should pay a visit to my father's grave, and tell him the truth of what happened, as well as how it all ended. And on top of that, just how much people still look up to him, to this day. That includes me, too. Miss Navia. Indeed. Mm -hmm. We want to go too! We also think Callus is a really admirable person. Sure thing. I'd like you two to share the moment with me. After all, without you, there might not have been such a positive ending. And in that case, everyone, let's be off. Considering the recent weather, we'll be lucky if we can reach Poisson before dark. Yeah, you're right. It's been raining non-stop for a few days now. Huh. This is where my father's grave is. Hmm. To be perfectly honest, even I haven't been back here for... a long time. Huh? There's someone there already. Wait... That figure... It can't be... Hmm? Isn't that Nervalette? Why would the Chief Justice be here? Huh? Navia? Hmm... hmm. My apologies. I should have asked before coming to pay my respects. Don't say that. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, I was trying to say there's no need for you to apologize. I wanted to show my father how much I've grown. But still, I doubt I've grown to the point that even the Chief Justice would feel compelled to apologize to me over and over. In that case, I will stop apologizing for now. Hmm. You really could use some pointers on understanding human emotions, Monsieur Nervillette. In any case, why did you come to Poisson? Hmm. Well, ever since that day, I've been turning a question over and over in my head. Just what is justice, anyway? There was once a time when I didn't want to believe that there could be anything more important to humans than life itself. Oh, rather than that, it's probably more truthful to say I didn't believe humans were capable of resisting the most basic instinct of living things. That they could rebel against their own nature, 
or consider certain things to be more important than their own lives. Which is also why I didn't stop your father from beginning that fateful duel. I believed that a truly innocent man would never throw away his life like that. That there was nothing, should have been nothing more important than one's own continued survival. But Mr. Callus proved me utterly and decisively wrong. If not for his sacrifice, the serial disappearances case would have remained unsolved to this day. Mr. Callus made the choice he did for his daughter, for his associates, and for many people completely unrelated to him. And in the end, from a certain perspective, one could say that he did it all for the sake of justice. A justice that's higher than life itself. So, you asked me why I came here. I just wanted to say my apologies to Mr. Callis in person. I should have noticed all of this much sooner. This regret has filled me with a sadness that has haunted me for days. That high and mighty chair in the opera Epicles indeed insulates one from many important things. Spina di Rosula, thank you so much for your hard work and perseverance. Uh, I'm sorry for being mad at you before. So, you're actually one of those types that's cold on the outside, but pretty thoughtful on the inside, huh? That reminds me of Silver, one of my guys. Sorry about that. Self-expression is not one of my strong suits. <sighs> Didn't I just say you don't need to apologize? Ah, so Navia and Nervalet seem to have made their peace as well. Let's not disturb them for now. We can wait till after they're done. <sighs> Paimon's never paid respects at someone's grave before. Uh, did Paimon do anything rude there? Huh? Oh, Paimon didn't know that was a thing? But, but Paimon doesn't know what she would do if she can't fly! Oh no! Paimon hopes Miss Navia won't be too mad! Anyway... Nervalette is still standing around there. It's not often that we can catch him alone like this, so... Why don't we go talk to him for a bit? If we can't talk to Lady Farina, we can at least talk to him, right? Oh, it's you two. Did Miss Navia invite you to come pay your respects to her father? Mm-hmm. We ran into Navia on the streets today, so we just followed her here. I see, I see. Then is there something that I can help you with? Uh, um, well, it's pretty hard to run into you like this since you're usually super busy. So we figured we could try to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Please feel free. Though outsiders, you helped us solve one of the greatest mysteries in Fontaine, and it would be my pleasure to return the favor. So, at court, the bad guys referred to that special water as water from the Primordial Sea, but... what is it really? Truthfully, that name is already quite accurate. I can only surmise that Vache and his ilk only learned of its nature and existence after extensive research. There used to be a special sea on the surface of this planet. The nature of its seawater was rather different from that of the sea we know today. Most of Tevat's life forms were first born in that special sea. You could say it nurtured much of the life on this planet. Huh. So it really was where everything began. It makes sense to call it primordial, then. But today, the Primordial Sea no longer exists on the planet's surface. What Vashe discovered must have been some kind of special case, or a remnant from a truly ancient age. Huh. So that's how it is. Oh, you really know everything, Monsieur Nervalet. But if that's the case, then why would people, uh, at least people from Fontaine, dissolve in that kind of water? 
Indeed. Why would the primordial sea, which was known to engender and nurture life, suddenly reverse itself and devour life instead? To be frank, that also doesn't match my understanding of this world and its laws. There must still be some unknown secrets around the people of this land. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? That the sea levels will rise and everyone will be dissolved in water, leaving Farina crying alone on her throne, but the sins of the people will be finally washed away for good? Does that appropriately summarize the version you've heard? That's right! It was Lenny that told us back then! And that about covers all the main points! Yes, up to the present, I think we reached a point where we have no choice but to confront this prophecy directly. Rumors have it that this prophecy is rooted in the last words the former Hydro Archon left to the world before she passed away. A prophecy? Of the former Hydro Archon? Wow. This is the first time that we've ever heard of it. Two parts of the prophecy have already proven correct. The rising sea levels and the ability of the people of Fontaine to be dissolved. We should be more vigilant and stay on the watch for further signs. Speaking of the prophecy, Farina has also always taken it quite seriously. Indeed, she has been collecting information and intelligence from across Tevat for this purpose. If the rumors were true, then perhaps this prophecy is the conundrum left to Farina by her predecessor. But with Farina being the way she is, can we really trust her to solve it? Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? My apologies. My investigation has still not reached its conclusion. However, I still believe the judgment of the Oratrice was not rendered arbitrarily. Huh? But you also said you thought he was innocent! For many years, I have been quite aware that the Oratrice does not simply mechanically repeat the verdict that I give on each case. As a divinely created mechanism, the people's unified faith in the concept of justice is integrated into it. Not only can it produce the incredible power of indemnitium, but it likely also possesses other traits, such as self-awareness. Which is all to say, I have been prepared for a situation like this for a long time. Huh. So when Linny told us that he heard a human voice from the room where the Oratrice's core is stored... I was not aware such a thing had occurred. Perhaps that could serve to prove my conjecture, I will add that to the list of items to investigate. In any case, I am inclined to believe that the Oratrice does have a methodology all its own. We just do not have enough information. Based on Farina's reaction, I doubt even she had any idea what was going on. She managed to bluff her way through it, though, with her time-tested twin tricks of bravado and drama. While we do intend to get to the bottom of this, for now, we regret to say that the Fatui Harbinger We'll just have to bide his time in the fortress of Meripede. If we did incorrectly convict him of crimes he did not commit, we will most certainly compensate him to the fullest extent allowed by the law. If you ask Paimon, the only compensation he'll want is a no-holds-barred fight with you. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? Your sibling. Another blonde-haired traveler. I'm sorry, but I've never seen anyone who matches that description. If he ever stepped foot in Fontaine, I'm sure he followed our laws to the letter and had no reason to appear on the stage of the opera Epicles. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? Very well. It was my honor to provide you with what answers I could. I very much enjoyed conversing with you. It will soon be time for me to leave this blissful tranquility behind and return to Palais Memonia. You really are super busy, Monsieur Nervalette. Paimon thought you only came here to pay your respects today because you had the day off. Crime and villainy do not have the day off, and so justice must work around the clock as well. This is merely the nature of a justice's work. All right, all right, you've got a point. Huh? Paimon just noticed that the rain has stopped. <sighs> you know, we've been walking around for a while now. Why don't we go back to the Spina di 
to assume a face in the court of Fontaine and have a rest. Navia said something about having a place ready for us there, didn't she? Come on, let's go! Ad Astra Abyssosk, welcome to the Adventurous Guild. Ad Astra Abyssosk. Thank you for completing today's commissions. Bow your head. The tides beckon. I need to get out. 